Hey guys, so this is uh, the video for lesson 4 on characterization. Uh, yeah, so there's a few points that, oh, it's, it's a pretty long chapter and uh, it's not that easy to summarize and encapsulate into a few points, but I think, uh, okay, so just to try my best, I basically summarize it in uh, into three points that are I think they, uh, that forms the essence of uh, the lessons of this chapter on characterization, right? So basically, it talks about how to portray the character's physicality, how to portray the character's mind or the mentality, as I call it, and how to portray portray the character's emotions. Uh, so it's, it's like how you know we talk about the uh, preparation, right, for an actor, uh, the PMS, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. But this is in the context of the characterization of the role rather than you know, the, man, the the preparation of the actor to go into the role. Yeah. So, um, but before I, I go to the three points, um, I just want to highlight like two quotes from the chapter that uh, also gives the essence of what the lesson is about. So the first quote is... Um, it is like this, my child, the actor creates the whole length of a human soul's life on the stage every time he creates a part. This human soul must be visible in all its aspects, physical, mental and emotional. Besides, it must be unique. It must be the soul, the same soul the author thought of, the one the director explained to you, the one you brought to the surface from the depths of your being, no other but that one. So this talks about the uniqueness and... So, like, I, I remember it, we had some discussions in chapter 1 or chapter 2. Like, some of us asked, what's the definition of a soul in this context, right? So, I guess now we have the answer from the point of view, not of, like, philosophers or whatever, but from the point of view of the author. What he means by the soul is, what he means by soul is um, the uniqueness of the character, right? Like, all human beings physically are mostly the same. We have the same four limbs, the same head, the same position of the nose and all that, but... Uh, what makes each and every one of us unique is you know, there are some things that are unique. So that those points that make Latif and you know one of you or anybody else unique is you know that those those things that make me unique uh, characterize or forms the soul in this context of the discussion. Yeah, and the next quote is about um, and the character who owns this created soul on the stage is unique and different from all the rest. It is Hamlet and nobody else. It is Ophelia and nobody else. They are human, that's true, but here the similarity ends. We are all human. We have the same number of arms and legs and, no and our noses are placed respectively in the same positions. Yeah, what I said just now. Yet, as there are no two oak leaves alike, there are no two human beings alike. And when an actor creates a human soul in the form of a character, he must follow the same wise rule of nature and make that soul unique and individual. So when an actor creates a human soul in the form of a character, he must follow the same wise rule of nature and make that soul unique and individual. So this is kind of an organic process, like from a, it's like an inside-out organic process, whereby instead of trying to look at something and try to look at somebody and try to portray that character, try to mimic and copy him uh, f uh, physically or through the observation, right? Uh, this method is more internal to external. It's more about like um, you internalize what are those internal factors that make that person unique and then you manifest and externalize that, you know, like how nature does it, you know, through uh, when, when, when nature grows life, when, when plants grow or when animals or human beings grow, it's an internal to external process. Like nature basically reads the DNA, the unique DNA of, of a person the DNA of a species is mostly the same, but except for some tiny little details that make a person unique, right? So nature reads that DNA code and uh, that internal thing and externalize it, you know, that, that uniqueness is externalized in, in, in that sense. So we are, in a way, you know, through this method of acting, mimicking the process of nature, like, and that to me is quite organic and natural. And, and, and this is why, like, probably... Uh, uh, it's one of the most authentic feeling methods of acting amongst the different schools of thought. Okay, so the three points are how to portray a character's physicality. So in this sense, same thing going back to the you know, the soul of the character, right? Um, 
when usually when people talk about the soul, uh, it's something metaphysical, it's something um, you know related to the spiritual and not material. But in this context, the soul of the physicality or this this soul has a physical dimension to it. Uh, it's basically about the uniqueness of the physical traits of the character. Uh, it doesn't say in this chapter, or I, I, I don't think animal exercises are talked about in this book. Oh yeah, because this book predates Lee Strasberg, right? Um, but I guess things that we do in terms of the animal exercise would help uh, to create the uniqueness of the physical expressions of the character, right? So we take some elements from certain animals that we feel uh, characterize or symbolizes the character's soul and apply li little tiny bits and pieces here and there, but also has to has, have some sense of logic and uh, rationality to it um, uh, to, to, to make the, the physical portrayal of that character unique. Uh, so what is advice here is to observe and appropriate accordingly from relevant sources. You, know, you, you observe people, uh, you maybe observe animals or you even look at how, uh, uh, how, how animals move or how things in nature move, um, or how uh, different people in different situations react, or different people in the same or similar situations react. And you see, you find those things that look and seem interesting to you, yet at the same time also has to make sense for the personality of, and, and for the background of that character. Yeah. And the next part is, or, or the next um, point is about how to portray the character's mind, the character's mentality. So the author here says that the actor has to portray in the sense that the author, or in, in the context of like theater and, and film, uh, sometimes the director wants it. So it's not 100% how the actor thinks it should be portrayed. Um, uh, I maybe want to relate it to my recent uh, filming on Friday. Uh, so I'm, I was playing uh, this guy who is obsessed with cutting grass, cutting and collecting grass because of the different shades of green of grass uh, and collecting them in a book organized by different shades of green. And this character is someone who is just obsessed and passionate about the shades of green. He's a little isolated, but he's OCD um, and he's, uh, he's very detailed. He's... He has a lot of attention to details, um, even in terms of the way he dresses, uh, shows his OCDness, uh, and and because of this, he uh, he's somehow shuts himself out from the rest of the world. So it's not very social, and and in, in the short story, in the short film, uh, he's approached by a guy who you know he's just curious about why he cuts the grass, and they sort of. Uh, start a friendship of sorts because like for me i'm obsessed with grass my character is obsessed with grass but my uh, my co-actor or my, my uh, co-characters character is obsessed with bubbles right uh, i hope like by next month uh, the film the short film should be out then i send you guys the link so basically how how i portray the, the this character's physicality uh, i take a bit of the animal exercises uh, so there's there's some scenes that there's a there's a, there's a scene whereby I'm literally squatting or kneeling uh, on the grass patch in the middle of Raffles CBD, cutting grass right, with all the crowds surrounding. So the lessons in concentration and uh, you know just relaxing my mind and shutting off the attention of the <laughs> all the, the entire Raffles CBD crowd comes into play here. And I just really focus on the grass. I don't look at the people's expressions when they see me or when they see the whole film crew. Right? I just concentrate on the grass. Concentrate on the physicality of you know a person who just is obsessed with the different shades of green of the grass. And that's the only thing in the world that is important to me at that particular moment. And then suddenly, my concentration is interrupted by this guy who comes in and asks, what am I doing? Right. So my reaction is, you know, um, very deadpan and uh, uh, a bit aggressive and defensive. So I said, I don't know, what do you think I'm doing? Then uh, I, I had my... I had my way of thinking of how to portray this, uh, but just this one line because it's the introduction, the introductory line that also introduces the character of of that uh, of that person. Um, but then the director, who is also the writer for for the for the movie for for the short film, uh, she gives another idea. You know, like so, 
sometimes we have our own ideas of how to portray the character uh, but the writer and the director also has their own ideas to to portray it uh, i guess it is is a, a uh, there's uh, there has to be some kind of um, discussion two way discussions between the actor and the director right but uh, uh, in the overall scheme of things i believe the i mean we should give way or or, or the priority to the director's vision because the director knows the whole context of the whole story um, and, and how everything fits together yeah uh, although yes the actor also has a part to play in understanding the entire context of the entire story yeah so i give in to uh, the director's uh, idea and vision of how that line should be portrayed so for me it's just it's just like a deadpan expression i don't know what do you think i'm doing uh, but the director suggests to me to uh, add another action to it so basically i was cutting the grass right uh, which i feel to me is a bit comedic a bit over the top but i i just trust the director has has a reason for that so i just follow what what she says i basically take take a piece of grass and using my scissors cut that gra- piece of blade of grass in front of the guy who asked me that question i don't know what do you think i'm doing so to portray the sense that uh, i am um very shut off from the world I hate to be interrupted um, and I can show some aggressiveness as a defense mechanism uh, against people who want to intrude into my affairs. Yeah. So this is the the, the lesson that is uh, being uh, discussed about you know, how to portray a character's mind. The character's mind uh, should, uh, the actor should give space or rather should give preference for the uh, author's preferences, for the director's vision of how Um, the character should be portrayed right? and how it's done is through the rhythm and organized energy of the delivery of the author's words so i i, I did the filming um, on friday but i only read it like just literally just now so this kind of matches what you know i have experienced also like basically um the, the writer has has an idea of how the character should be done and the manifestation of that character's mind that man, uh, the character's mentality is done through the rhythm and the organized energy like Uh, the the director so uh, she suggested how i should emphasize certain words over others i have my own ideas she also has her own ideas yeah so in that sense like we should give the preferences to, uh, we should give the preference to the director and or the writer yeah then the next point is on how to portray the character's emotions okay so only when portraying the character's emotions does the writer allow the actor some space to portray uniquely to his or her abilities and interpretation provided the actor is of course well trained and has a firm grasp on the story the context the physicality the mentality of the character and then when the actor gets a general sense of how to portray the character's emotions and rhythms and timings right only then will uh, should the actor allow some freedom in expressing those emotions uh there was a particular Um, very brief one to two second shot I was required to do where um, at first I I was annoyed and then I have to within that space of two seconds change my expression from annoyed irritated to uh, opening up to coming down and uh, like feeling connected to the guy who interrupted me right so after that scene where I was interrupted when cutting the grass It moves to another scene whereby I was uh, pasting that blades of grass I was uh, uh, I was cutting into into the book in, uh, into the different pages that are organized by the shades of green, right? And then when he interrupts me the second time, I looked again at him with a very annoyed expression. Uh, but when I saw something in his hand, which is some more blades of grass, right? So he's like making an effort to try to connect with me, and he sort of understands people who are shut off from the world and He's like making a peace gesture with me. Um, I, I sort of soften after that, right? So uh, that take that particular shot, even though it's about two to three seconds at most, two seconds long in the final film, it took about almost ten takes to do that to really master it. Yeah, um, because at first it's about the timing, like uh, how much time I should spend frowning, uh, looking annoyed at the guy. And then how many beats I should spend on looking at the blade of grass that triggers me to be more open and accepting of this guy who wants to intrude into my space. Yeah. And I also used a bit of lessons from um, 
memory of emotion, uh, me memory of emotion, affective memory. So I I just thought to my I, I just uh, told myself um when I look annoyed, okay the, the problem is director uh the the director thinks that there is no difference there's not much difference between me looking annoyed and me opening up like for me i feel i felt like it's just a very subtle thing like uh looking annoyed just slight frown and then looking open that means i just let go of the frown make a make a neutral face uh, but the problem is i i kind of have a resting no people have the expression of resting beach face i have a resting yeah, people will interpret my expression differently. So I have a basically a resting, annoyed face sometimes. And also it was under the hot sun. Yeah, so I have to basically like um, notch up the annoyed expression so that when I release the annoyed expression, right, there is a very significant difference between the annoyed expression and the opened up expression. Uh, so what I do is I use uh, affective memory and also like exaggerate the expression a little bit. So I annoyed... And when I'm opened up, uh, I basically think of my children. Like, I, I love my children so much, so they make me smile. Then when I open up, I, I think about my children when I look at the blade of, blade of grass that the, that the guy brings in. Yeah, although these two are very extreme. So it somehow works. The director thinks that that works. So I just, yeah. Uh, so this ties in with like what the author says in this chapter on... Um, allowing some freedom in expressing the emotions. So sometimes it might take a bit of exaggeration or what we think or what the actor thinks is a bit of exaggeration in expression. But if that's what the director wants, I guess, uh, and it works, then I guess it works. Yeah. Okay, so actually there's a lot more in the chapter. Um, but I think if I talk more, I will just ramble on to maybe 20 minutes. So uh, I look forward to the next lesson and we will talk about the next chapter soon. Thanks.